And now let's hear the, the Vice President of Uganda, Jessica Lupo, in the UN Assembly. Organization fit for purpose and relevant for our times. In this regard, Uganda remains committed to the reform of the United Nations Security Council to make it more representative and to address the historical injustices committed against the people of Africa as spelled out by the common African position and enshrined in the Ezulwini consensus and the Sate Declaration. Mr. President, Uganda acknowledges that timely and full implementation of the SDG 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is crucial for the achievement of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. In this regard, the government has continued to take bold actions to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda nationally. Notable actions include the operationalization of voluntary local reviews and institution of the National Sustainable Development Goals Conference held annually with the participation of all stakeholders to discuss the process so far achieved and agree on the actions to ensure full compliance. Nationally, we continue to register steady progress in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, whose progress shall be contained in the third Voluntary National Review Report to be presented during the high-level political forum under the auspices of the UN Economic and Social Council in July 2024. Mr. President, peace and security is fundamental and crucial in achieving sustainable development. Therefore, we need to reflect on the original purposes of the United Nations and the work to resolve man-made conflicts and, and global insecurity through cooperation, diplomacy, and peaceful means. In this regard, Uganda has continued to work with partners to support and advance peace, stability, and security initiatives in the region and beyond so as to eliminate terrorism, mistrust, and other conditions that undermine development. We remain actively involved in the regional initiatives, particularly those under the African Union, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, the East African Community, and the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region. Our involvement is based on the fundamental values of multilateralism. As the international community, we must be steadfast in our resolve to support dialogue and the peaceful resolution of conflicts whenever they occur around us and anywhere else in the world. Mr. President, Uganda has been at the forefront of receiving large numbers of refugees from within the region and ranks as one of the top refugee hosting countries. Uganda extends her gratitude to the UN member states and other development partners for the support and assistance rendered to the country and refugees respectively. We are working closely with the UN and partners to address the root cause of displacement. Uganda remains committed to shoulder its responsibilities and obligations in addressing the plight of refugees as a pioneer of the progressive refugee policy outlined in the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework. As one of the co-conveners co co of the Global Refugee Forum, we commend all the states and other actors for their sustained commitment over the last three years, and we call upon member states and stakeholders to continue their commitment to pledge towards initiatives that advance the principle of burden and responsibility sharing central to the compact during the forthcoming Global Refugee Forum. 
Mr. President, the Constitution of Uganda provides for the protection of the rights and freedoms of all Ugandans, as well as for the promotion of culture. Uganda has institutional safeguards which address grievances of human rights abuses. Objective 24 of the Constitution states that cultural and customary values are consistent with the fundamental human rights and freedoms, human dignity, and democracy. Our approach to human rights is to respect other people's values and as we expect others to respect our values, which are deep-rooted in our culture. We therefore call upon, we therefore call for mutual respect of sovereignty. We believe that human rights considerations, especially in the face of varying cultural values, should not become the moderating factor in our long-term relationship with our development partners with whom we will continue to engage in a proactive manner. Mr. President, regarding the culture equality, over 34.9% of the parliamentary and executive seats in Uganda are composed of women. On economic empowerment, Uganda has embarked on poverty alleviation programs which target women and youth participation in the economy. We are currently promoting value addition value chain and public procurement from the various Uganda Women Entrepreneurship programs. With the creation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, women will participate in cross-border trade within the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. However, work still needs to be done in Uganda to achieve full gender equality. Mr. President, climate change continues to undermine the ability of all nations to achieve the sustainable development goals. Globally, we continue to witness climate and weather extremes causing considerable loss of lives and property. We remain concerned that countries that are less contributors to the global greenhouse gases continue to be disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change. In this regard, Mr. President, my country extends its sincere condolences to the people of Morocco following the devastating 6.8 magnitude earthquake, which claimed more than 800 lives, and the people of Libya following the aftermath of Storm Daniel that resulted in the unprecedented flooding and loss of lives. To address the adverse impacts of climate change, Uganda continues to take bold climate adaptation and mitigation measures that include increasing access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy to enhance production and value addition increasing forest and wetland cover, and championing the operationalization of smart, climate smart agriculture, among others. In line with our ambitions updated nationally, determine contributions. However, we note that the lack of sufficient means of implementation continues to undermine our efforts to adequately address the impacts of climate change. We thus reiterate our call to the developed country parties in line with the Paris Agreement to fulfill their commitment of providing the U.S. dollars 100 billion annually to developing countries parties through 2025 to assist with respect to both mitigation and adaptation. Mr. President, we remain deeply concerned about the increasing trend in biodiversity laws. We believe that the full and timely implementation of the decisions adopted at the 15th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity are fundamental to effectively address biodiversity laws. In this context, 
government of Uganda has continued to take bold actions to address biodiversity laws. These actions include, among others, complete restoration of all degraded wetlands, reforestation, as well as prosecution of all those involved in illegal activities that undermine the preservation of flora and fauna. Our view, Mr. President, is that conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity remains a commitment for all nations and humankind. We therefore urge the international community to provide developing countries with sufficient means of implementation in terms of financing, capacity building, and technological transfer to support their efforts to address the challenges of biodiversity loss. Mr. President, developing countries continue to face unprecedented financing challenges, which undermine their ability to achieve sustainable development. We believe that urgent need to reform the international financing architecture is fundamental and crucial in addressing these challenges. These reforms must be substantial to ensure that developing countries are well represented to effectively and efficiently participate in the decision making of these international financial institutions. Our view is that these international financial institutions should support developing countries in their development efforts in accordance with their national policies and legal frameworks. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic presented a multitude of challenges to global health systems and essential health services. This crisis not only reversed hard-fought health gains, but has also inflicted severe economic hardships, especially in developing countries like Uganda. We have witnessed widespread job losses, disruptions in supply chains, decreased foreign investments, and increased poverty rates. These economic setbacks further exacerbate the already existing challenges towards meeting the 2030 Agenda. In Uganda, for instance, despite earlier progress, access to universal health care today stands at 65%, which is well short of the SDG target of 100%. The crisis, while daunting, also presents opportunities for us to rethink and reinforce our commitment to health care and the Sustainable Development Goals. Despite the challenges, I am happy to report that Uganda has registered positive achievements in some effective disease control measures, as demonstrated by its swift and successful response to the Ebola outbreak. Through diligent efforts and the collaboration of healthcare professionals and the government, Uganda declared the end of the Ebola outbreak caused by Sudan Ebola virus on 11th January 2023, just four months after the first case was confirmed in September 2022. This accomplishment underscores the importance of surveillance, contact tracing, and infection prevention and control in swiftly mitigating public health crisis. By working together and capitalizing on expertise and infrastructure development in these areas, we can collectively contribute to a healthier, more resilient world. Mr. President, the non-aligned movement remains a key player in handling current and emerging global challenges within the United Nations. The movement remains relevant in serving the interests of its member states in line with its founding principles and purposes. In this regard, Uganda as the incoming chair of NAM will closely work with other NAM countries to further strengthen the tenets and values of the organization and the important role that the movement plays within the United Nations and other international fora. As host of the 19th NAM Summit, we look forward to welcoming the NAM heads of state and government to Kampala, Uganda, 
from 19th to 20th January 2024. Finally, Mr. President, the South-South cooperation remains a strong element of international cooperation within the countries of the Global South, which must be enhanced. We continue to witness the solidarity exhibited by countries in the Global South to extend support to their global counterparts to address the multiple challenges. We therefore commend these countries for the solidarity. Uganda will continue to support the strengthening of the South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation, as well as North-South cooperation with the United Nations. As the third South Summit host, we look forward to welcoming the leaders of G77 plus China to Kampala, Uganda, from 21st to 23rd January 2024. I thank you for your kind attention. On behalf of the Assembly... And that was Jessica Lupo, Vice President of Uganda, talking about uh, the displaced people, refugee people, the climate change, and uh, the, uh, the, the earthquake in Morocco.